we are spinning for the honey varietal for episode number 10. So let's let's do this. I'm gonna do it right now. Um oh okay, okay, okay. Pumpkin! We're gonna be using pumpkin blossom honey. We're gonna go ahead and roll the fruit now for episode 10. Here we go. Rolling, rolling. And it landed on oh plum. We're now gonna spin the third wheel for this. This is the wheel with all of our spices and like odd flavors. This includes things that could really mess this up. So we're gonna go ahead and do it. Here we go. And this lands on a P. That's very interesting. Third wheel. What do you think about that? Cinnamon stick. Okay, I've gone out and gotten all of the ingredients. So um, it's been about three months since I did that little uh, live stream to get all of the ingredients. I had to do some research. So I have here a couple of things. I have plum extract. Now this, I'll show you a picture of it. Don't even ask me to pronounce it, ain't gonna work. So this is plum extract. I found it on Amazon. It's the best alternative I have to using plums right now. I could go and go to the store and do plum stuff, but I think this will be more interesting. We have our pumpkin blossom honey, which is right here. Um, we have water and we're gonna use the Lauvin D47, which is right here. I have an open packet that I'm gonna be using. So first step, before we get going, I'm just gonna go ahead and rehydrate the yeast because we know we need to do that. So let me go ahead and do this. We're gonna rehydrate with GoFirm to give them some real help. Okay, of course everything's been sanitized. I don't need to say that. I already do that. Um, all right, let's go ahead and start. Well, let me tell you my recipe roughly. This is 2.2 pounds of plum extract. I think I'm gonna use one pound to start in the primary. I've never used it before, so I have no idea how strong it is. I'm gonna leave some extra so that I can come back and add more if I need to, if the plum flavor is gone. Um, so I'm gonna add one pound of plum extract. I'm adding, I think 1.5 pounds of pumpkin uh, blossom honey. We're gonna come back and add some more for back sweetening, of course. Then the Lavin D47, water up to a gallon. We're gonna use Fermaid O for this, following the Tazna 3.0 schedule for this. So step uh, feeding it with its nutrients and do all that. You don't care about that, about that stuff. You care about what this tastes like. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix in all of my ingredients like I just said, and I'll be right back. All right, so some of you might be asking, what does pumpkin blossom honey taste like? It's got like an interesting vanilla, kind of bright um, spice note. Maybe a little bit, it's not like pie, uh, excuse me, it's not like pumpkin. Um, it has a little bit of the element, maybe the spicy spice side, but not like, doesn't taste like pumpkin, I'll tell you that. Uh, it's a little roasty, but it's not, it's not like you're biting into a pumpkin. That's, that's not quite how honey works. <laughs> um, let me mix this up. As this currently stands, we're at 1.100 gravity. That's before I fill up the rest of the gallon. I bet we'll kick down to about 1.070. Um, I'm trying to figure out if I wanna go further, if I wanna add more honey. Well, let's see what it tastes like. Let's see if we can even get plum flavor. Ultimately, we're probably gonna have to go extra plummy to try and make this uh, uh, pop, ultimately. So I might have to add more plum extract. Yeah, I definitely think I need more plum extract. I'm gonna go, how about this? I'm gonna save uh, half a pound of this or eight ounces of this for back sweetening extra flavoring. This is perfect. Starting gravity 1.092. So uh, I, I love that, I think that's great. That's just shy of like 12%, I believe. So or might be at 12%. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and put our yeast in that has been rehydrating real fast. So this is the GoFirm and D47. There we go. Now let's top it off with the rest of this must and get a little taster. I know there's a little foam on top, that'll come down. I wanna leave space for fermentation so this doesn't volcano out and get me in trouble. What does the must taste like? 
Oh, that's very plummy. You do get some essence of the pumpkin blossom honey. There's sweetness, a lot of sweetness. I think it's gonna be great. Let's go ahead and let this go through the primary. So I'm gonna put an airlock on, write down all of my information about this so I don't forget. We'll come back after it finishes fermenting and then we'll keep going. All right, we're about 28 days into fermentation. I've seen it kind of slow down. We're at 1.000, starting gravity 1.092. So we've fermented through everything we can. Let's go ahead now and take a quick taste test and see what it's like after the primary. Like I said, it's cleared up some. We will rack it right after this, but let's see what it tastes like. Oh, still got a lot of yeastiness. Oh, it's kind of tart. Interesting. Very like, it's retained a lot of the um, uh, kind of baking spice, kind of interesting spice side from the honey. The plums faded quite a bit and it's more tart, but I do think it's because it's dry. I think back sweetening will help it quite a bit. Okay, here's my next step. We are gonna go ahead and rack this into a new container and then add our cinnamon stick. In. All right, I like to use these natural cinnamon sticks. Now, I honestly hadn't investigated much, but I cannot tell you if this is the Ceylon cinnamon or cassia cinnamon. I haven't done a test to see which is better, so this just literally does not say on here what it is. So I'm gonna put it in, it smells good, and it's worked well for me before. One cinnamon stick per gallon. We're then gonna put our airlock on. This is a silicone bung that actually is breathable, so I can put this on here and it will still burp and do all of its things. We're gonna let that cinnamon stick set in for roughly, I bet, three to seven days, depending on how fast it imparts. After that, we'll come rack it off and we'll taste test and go from there. So here we go. All right, listen, there's a reason I say to taste test your stuff regularly with cinnamon and other flavors. And that's because four days into this, I taste tested this cinnamon, the cinnamon's popping. It's in my face already. And um, I'm afraid it's gonna be too hot. So just to see what the mix would be, I have mixed in a little bit more pumpkin blossom honey in with just a small sample of this. And we're gonna taste test this now. So this is gonna be sweeter, has cinnamon, has plum. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I don't know if I got enough honey. But the sweetness is helping. The cinnamon is there. It's like, I don't want the cinnamon to be the predominant flavor. So I'm gonna go ahead and rack off the cinnamon today. Yeah, that, I, I like that quite a bit. It needs more sweetness though. I didn't put quite enough honey. Here's my plan. Cinnamon is strong enough, we're gonna cut it loose. Again, four days, y'all. Taste test your stuff, holy crap. We're gonna rack this off into a new container, and then we'll talk. All right, we've racked it into a new container. Here is the plan. I've got it right here. We're about a month old, not super old. So it's still got some problems. Yeastiness, alcohol heat, that kind of stuff. It'll fade over time. I am going to stabilize this with potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite. These are a can you know work together to stabilize the mead to halt yeast fermentation essentially making the area where the yeast are not a good place for fermentation you could stabilize in other methods including pasteurizing and those things i'm personally choosing this it's a surefire way for me to halt fermentation in this you don't have to do it i understand some of you in the comments are going to be like well you should have pasteurized I'm going to brew the way I intend to, and I desire to. You can brew the way you want to. Let's not scream and shout and do that stuff. Stupid. So we're gonna go ahead and stabilize this, then wait about 48 hours or so, come back. We're gonna add the rest of our plum juice puree, whatever we wanna call this thing, to add more plum flavor. We are then going to add some honey to back sweeten to the level that we desire. So we'll have pumpkin blossom honey, plum flavor, cinnamon stick. Probably need to set for a little while longer to let it age, to chill out, also to ensure there's no re-fermentation. So let me go ahead and stabilize this real fast. All right, I'll be back in 48-ish hours to move on. All right, here we are for the tasting, episode 10 tasting. I just told Tony here all about this mead um, and all of the craziness, including the, the Chinese extract that I couldn't read. Um, so our goal today is just to taste test it. 
Okay. And I want you to give me your full opinion. Don't hold back. If you're like, this sucks, then be like, tell me it sucks. If it's good, great, you know, whatever. But we're trying to decide if this, these three ingredients can be a meat. So let's let's check the nose on it first. Tell me what you get from the nose. Um, <laughs> it kind of reminds me of um, like the cheap. Um... <laughs> I like where this is going. Of the cheap. Really, dot, dot, this dot. isn't really a bad thing. I mean, I guess it just depends <laughs> if you like these or not. Uh, like the cheap uh, plum sakes that you can buy. Oh, okay. Yeah. There are some there are some like really high quality plum sakes out there that are made with like real plums and they're not flavored or anything. Uh-huh. They're they're super good. Um mm -hmm. which there's I have one that you should try. It's very yeah. good. But um it kind of reminds me just it, that the cinnamon comes through. Well, that would make sense that I mean the, the plum I used probably I don't know if it was the <laughs> highest quality plum <laughs> in the land. So the cinnamon comes through. Uh-huh. I think it's really good. <laughs> it's, just, it's like um, it's sweet. I should have brought some pumpkin blossom honey for you to taste to get that. It's kind of got some natural baking spice ish mm -hmm. stuff to it. Mm. I think we could just dial back the sweetness a little bit. Yeah. And help. I mean, just this, the plum and the cinnamon are really coming through. Yeah. Like both are, are done really predominantly and there's not as much honey mm -hmm. as I would probably want. Yeah. But outside of that, if you just handed this to me, you're like, here, try this. I, I think I would think it was good. The, um, I think it's good. Uh, I think I, I when I back sweetened, I used more of that plum extract, and I think I might have used too much plum extract and not yeah, enough honey. Yeah, it kind of tastes that way. And because there is a lot of brightness, this is very, mm -hmm. very bright. And it's a little bit not like tart. It's like confusing because it's not tart, but it has some. Kind of tart. It has some clinging, a little bit of tartness to it. I feel like there's still like something grounding it. Yeah. Like something that needs to bring it together a little bit more. Yeah. I'm wondering with flavors, time if that'll help too. Yeah. The flavors yeah. itself are are good. Uh, it's a good combination of things. I think it's um, but there's just tweaking that needs to happen to kind of make it. Yeah. Take it to the next level. I. What do you think about the tannic value of it. Does it have enough cling? Does it? I think it probably have a little bit more. Yeah. Um, I do. Oh, maybe that's why I need but, some like, hmm. but maybe I think if you just balance back this sugar a little bit, that may, you may not need to do that. Yeah. It's got a lot of acid. I yeah, mean, we talked about acid good. quite a bit that the, the acidity is good. Um, and the tannin like in a vacuum is fine, uh -huh. but I think in conjunction with the sugar, it needs more. Mm -hmm. So, but I still think that the sugar is high. So, Pulling the sugar down a little bit. Yeah. Because it's quite sweet. It is. Mm -hmm. um, pulling pulling the sugar down a little bit would, would help with... Let with put the funnel gravity. With balancing the rest of it out. Yeah. No, I agree. I You know, that you just mentioning that made me think of some things I could do. I think that um, putting some a little bit of powdered wine tannin, which is something to add a little bit of that tannic body, would help. And also, what I found with it is it will actually temper down a lot of the um, sweetness. Not, not temper, but it'll round out the sweetness, as as tannin does, as it kind of molds and sands the edges of things. So either some oak, wine tannin, something like that would have helped here. But I do, I was a little leery of this combination. Honestly, I've never used plum before, so I didn't really know uh -huh. how that would ferment. Cinnamon, obviously. Pumpkin blossom is its own little thing. It's so, good. So I think it's good. Okay. Yeah, I just need some tweaking and... Yeah. Um, like if somebody wanted to make this, uh, I think they would be really happy with the flavor combinations. Yeah. So we just heard, heard it here first. This, uh, <laughs> this combination can work in the recipes right here. The one I made now, you are welcome to make this exactly how I did or tweak it or do whatever you want. But I think this combination can work and I think it should be investigated even more. That's kind of the fun thing about the series is I don't know that many people have made them. Plum and cinnamon and pumpkin blossom honey. Yeah, I mean, meat before. I mean, this. I mean, the flavors are like winter time, fall time uh -huh. flavors. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense. I think it's really good and just a little bit of tweaking. And if somebody wanted to make this home, I think they'd be happy with it. Yeah. Well, Tony, thank you for helping me taste test this. Um, if you'd like to see any of the previous nine episodes, um, you can find those on the channel. There will be more episodes of this in the future. 
But this has been a lot of fun. I hope you're going to make this or make a mead in general. And uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.